When Paolo Zamboni went looking for a neurologist to work with, our next speaker is the one who took the bait. Fabrizio Salvi will speak to us about the clinical presentations of CCSVI. Fab, you're on. Okay, we can start. <clears throat> Clinical presentation of uh, CCSY. This is again my center, and uh, I want to thank the association, Fondazione La Recere, CCSY, Nascosi Multipla, and the last one, ASSI.SM, the third association which uh, helped me in, uh, in, uh, in doing research and doing my practice. I can start with two major questions. As this is why a characteristic clinical feature. Second, is this is why specific for uh, multiple sclerosis? And uh, I'm going to, to answer to the first question. As a CSY characteristic clinical feature, what we learn came from four conditions. The first one is a short-term clinical benefit after PTA treatment. Short-term means uh, within a few days. The second, clinical modification in patient with uh, restenosis. The third, no focal symptoms accompanying MS relapses. Fourth, clinical assessment of a RIS subject. We can start with the first point. What we learned from our patients admitted to PTA procedure. Soon after the liberation of procedure, the following symptom is sign changed. Fatigue, headache, quality of sleep, working memory, edema indicating a cause-effect linkage from uh, venous hemodynamic modification and the symptoms. What are in common these uh, symptoms? Are in common that the pathophysiology of these disturbances are not well known and drug therapies for them remain without proven efficacy. We can start to feel with fatigue. This is a, a paper of uh, 2004. And the, the question is, uh, what drives quality of life in multiple sclerosis? And the, the conclusion is, uh, fatigue can profoundly disrupt the occupational and social functioning of MS patient. This is uh, absolutely true because 40% uh, of our patient describe fatigue as the most disabling symptoms, much more than spasticity, spasticity motor problem, sexual, bowel, bladder problems. The second is a headache. In these two papers, this and Uh, no, wait a second. Uh, later, yeah. In this paper, they talk about headache as comorbidity with multiple sclerosis. And uh, when the headache is present, there is a more symptomatic MS course. This is uh, absolutely true. And uh, I think that uh, is a comorbidity. Also, I think that uh, it's a, a comorbidity. Headache is a threefold more frequent than in normal population. And uh, one out of four patients have migraine 
that uh, influence uh, heavy the the life. Headache is uh, underestimated in MS population. It may accompany disease relapse, and uh, there is no a uh, unique type of uh, headache. The more characteristic one, the more uh, peculiar is uh, is that uh, headache that worse in supine position. I heard uh, about patients that are not able to to sleep uh, in a lying down position, and they are, are constricted to dream uh, in a sitting position. Often may occur the headache in, uh, in uh, this patient may occur during sleep. This is very important for the quality of life. And uh, I don't want to lose time uh, uh, explaining you that uh, in uh, when w one patient is uh, in lying down position, the most prevalent uh, font of uh, the pathway to to outflow from the brain is a uh, jugular vein. If you have uh, some problem in jugular vein, this increase uh, the of the blood uh, within the brain. Quality of sleep. This is another problem. Uh, also, this is a problem underestimated, uh, underrecognized by most physicians. And uh, about 50% of patients are poor sleepers. There are many kind of uh, disorder affecting sleep. But this is uh, uh, two new papers dealing about the correlation with the fatigue and sleep disorder. And, uh, the conclusion of this first uh, paper is that our result demonstrates a clear and significant relationship between fatigue and sleep disorder. That apparently is has no more sense, but uh, it has sense uh, in the view of uh, CSSY. This is the second new 2011 sleep disorder and fatigue in multiple sclerosis, evidence for association interaction. This is very important because this is uh, one more proof that uh, CCSY may exist. Memory working. Uh, memory work is an another big problem in a mass patient. Cognitive impairment uh, affect uh, from uh, 30 to 70 percent of patient and uh, the most important uh, defect is uh, regard memory work. This is a cartoon uh, say after PTA, before uh, and after PTA. And the last one is edema. Edema is, is not so common. We saw edema in, uh, mostly in uh, primary progressive form. And uh, in this case, you see an edema very peculiar. You see transluminant, and you see the, the big amount of uh, water, lymphatic, in this, uh, this feet. But also in, in the face edema. And you see before and after PTA, the face changed. I think that this is a, an impression of all radiologists who did PTA before and after PTA, the face change. And this lady has a, a, a restenosis, and they had uh, another change in the face, suggesting that th this uh, edema is related to the disease. The second point, clinical manifestation after during uh, restenosis. You know that uh, in, uh, in about 30-40% uh, of the patient there is a relapse after a PTA. Usually jugular vein uh, is the, the subject of restenosis and uh, all clinical relapses were associated with the vein restenosis in our patient. So what I suggest 
inverso. In the presence of restenosis, we have uh, time before MS relapse to recognize restenosis. It's mandatory to have a good clinical follow-up after good clinical and uh, ecodopera follow-up after PTA. This is uh, because uh, we, we, we can avoid neurological worsening, neurological relapse. And also in this case, the symptoms that return are fatigue, sleep disorder. This couple is very important, this symptomatology ca couple. Confused and heavy headness, headache. This is what I found in most of our patient uh, with uh, relapses. The reason for stenosis is uh, ineffective dilatation, persistent of valves, complete or partial thrombosis, or scar tissue. But the big question is, uh, is, it, uh, is it a real stenosis? In this case, we, you see uh, a thrombosis of uh, the jugular vein. Echocardial Doppler must be done within a few days after PTA in order to be sure that what happened is not due to, to a, a iatrogenic disease. No focal symptoms accompanying mass relapses. And this is uh, important because this is uh, another new paper and uh, you see a headache is a stabbing headache was the most common type of headache in uh, relapsing phase. So this is another sign important, headache. Fourth and last, clinical assessment of uh, race uh, subject. What does it mean race? RIS is a, a new defining entity described as incidental discovery of lesions suggestive of MS on uh, brain MRI, demonstrating dissemination in space, uh, multiple lesion, without symptoms expression and with a normal neurological examination. In this cartoon you see plaque MS, this is the neurologist, the patients say, but I'm feeling good. I have no disturbances. But race exists, so it's very important to, to say that this may be an entity that can precede CCS, C C CIS, mean that means clin clinically isolated syndrome and MS. This may be the, the onset of MS. And you see the reason why this patient, this subject, do MRI. And that's the same that I told you. Migraine, headache, and uh, fatigue, uh, and uh, other symptoms. So, this may be the clinical core of CCSY. And I repeat, headache, fatigue, working memory, quality of sleep, edema. But this core is specific, uh, and this is the so second question, is specific for multiple sclerosis. And uh, we open uh, our mind and uh, we look for uh, other diseases. Uh, that have this core in the symptomatology. And this is what we found. Normal pressure hydrocephalus, we need more data, we need more research regarding this syndrome. Fatigue, chronic headache. Uh, we found uh, three patients with the CCSY with the chronic headache. The characteristic of this chronic headache was the same for uh, uh, MS. Chronic headache that worse or appear during sleep or lying down position. And 
Arnold Chiari syndrome. I will talk uh, just a little bit about Arnold Chiari syndrome. Because Chiari syndrome or malformation is, a general, in, is in general a congenital condition characterized by anatomical defect of the base of the skull, in which the cerebellum and brainstem herniate through the foramen magnum into the cerebral spinal canal. This is very important because as for uh, uh, as for uh, CCSY, both conditions are malformative. Uh, yeah. In this syndrome, like in other cranio synostosis syndrome, we, you can find stenosis or atresia of the jugular foramen. This is very important because this may be the reason why this syndrome has a CCSY as an expression. But we come back the clinical manifestation are symptoms generally insidious onset and uh, a progressive core. The first uh, more disabling symptoms is a headache, a subcipital headache that may have a period of exacerbation and remission. Other symptoms are related to such as vertigo and uh, nystagmus and something else neck pain are related to the herniation of the foramen of the cerebellar tonsil in the foramen magnum, like you see in this uh, picture. We studied five patients with Arnold Chiari. And uh, three of these patients were, the, were associated with the multiple sclerosis. All uh, were female, and all three patients with the MS had uh, a relapsing remitting course. The reason for uh, CCSY, yeah, I don't know if there is also for uh, MS, is the venous engorgement in the posterior fossa in Chiari. The neurosurgeon know very well Arnold Chiari because um, many of these patients had um, a massive uh, bleeding during surgery. Okay, thank you.